place you gotta come if you're not feeling it. If you're feeling a little bit stuck, this is your unstuckable home for the next 40 minutes or so. We actually have an hour. We're gonna do uh, some discussion. I'm gonna tell you about some of the tools to use for getting unstuck, and then I'm gonna open it up and we can talk about some of the ways you get unstuck, how you can stay unstuckable, questions, whatever you want. Before we begin though, I, I need to tell you about two things. One is, this is a presentation full of swearing. Just in case it bothers anybody, I want to let you know that up front. I have tried really hard to stop swearing. Okay. That's not true. I don't try hard at all to, <laughs> not to stop. I, I swear, and I don't know why I do it, but I just do it. So there'll be lots of swearing. Second, I am Canadian. Are there other Canadians in the room? We got one. Cup. We're going to have to hug afterwards. So we <laughs> jump here. Uh, I tell people I'm Canadian because sometimes they hear me enunciate Canadian words, and they spend the whole time I'm talking wondering, is she Canadian? Or from Minnesota? Where's she from? So I just want to get that out of the way so you know I'm Canadian, you're going to hear some of that. But I've lived in San Francisco for 20 years, and I've worked in the technology industry my entire career, and I'm very happy to talk about never be stuck in business again with tools from tech innovators. And I've got a big goal for us today in this room, and that goal is for everybody to leave with at least one tool you can use to never be stuck again. And this doesn't mean that you're never going to get stuck because it is inevitable that you get stuck sometimes multiple times per day, but I want you to be able to recognize when it's coming on, and I want you to have some tool that speaks to you today to keep you moving forward. So it is a big goal to have everybody leave the room with something, but being stuck is a really big problem at work. Approximately 75% of people show up to work every day feeling stuck. And when you think about that, everybody you interact with, your clients, your colleagues, people that you manage, yourself, 75% of the interactions are with people who are feeling stuck. And we know stuck feels like shit. It actually feels bad in your body. It weighs you down. It's hard to get your work done. You can't really think creatively or find solutions if you're in this stuck place. And for me, what stuck often felt like was a doom loop. I just kept repeating through my mind over and over again all of the problems all of the ways that I couldn't move forward, all of the same shit over and over and over again in my mind. And I think the worst part about being stuck at work is that it doesn't stop when you close your laptop. You take that shit home with you, and it colors every part of your life. So you're actually stuck in your whole life if you're stuck at work. So it's a really big problem to solve. So I think the goal is outlandish today, but that's okay. I work in tech, and everything's outlandish in tech, so it's what we do. But we're going to keep going ahead, and I'm going to talk about the model today, this big goal, which is totally possible to achieve in 45 minutes. And I guess I should tell you my name. I'm Heather Cunningham. I'm the CEO of Hotwire Global. We're a global marketing and communications consultancy for tech and innovation companies. It's the only people we work with. And as I said, I've been in tech my entire career. Got into it by mistake. And in the fall of 2020, I was calling my friends, my family, my clients, people I worked with, just having conversations with everyone about what was going on. And the word that kept coming up over and over and over again in every conversation was yeah, stuck. stuck, thank you. Everybody was saying that word. And I thought, okay, I work in an industry, the tech industry, that never gets stuck, no matter what. Innovations keep happening. It doesn't matter what's going on in the macro environment in tech, I mean, it matters but there is this culture of keep moving forward. And so I thought back to years earlier when I had created a model for myself to help myself keep moving forward. So I took that out, I freshened it up, the unstuck model, and I started writing the book as a way to help people never be stuck at work again. But mostly because I needed it, and my team needed it, and I hoped it would help some other people. So that was the fall of 2020. I started that process of uh, bringing the book together. And I, with the book, really want to create a culture of unstuck at work. I think it is possible. But before I get into the model, I'd like you to just think about when the last time was that you were stuck. Because we're going to use it as a reference later on in the presentation. So you might have been this morning when you woke up. You might have felt stuck. Might have been last week. Maybe this decade for you has been a stuck decade. I don't know. But if you can just think of the last time you were stuck, that's going to help us later on. 
All right, from here on up, we're gonna go pretty fast, so stay with me. There are seven parts of the model. I'm only gonna deep dive into my favorite three or four. The rest I can tell you about later if you'd like. And after the model, as I said, we're gonna open it up for conversation because I'd love to hear from all of you about what you do to keep unstuck. So here's the model. Understanding where you wanna be. New thinking. Short-term tentative goals. Think and act big. Unusual moves. Create new and keep going. That is the top line of the model. Now let's get into it. Understanding where you want to be. Whoa, this is a doozy. This is the vision of where you want to be at work, in your life, in the world. It is the foundation of being able to be unstuck. And with the, uh, all the tools, I'm going to tell you you can mix and match them, but this is the master tool when it comes to being unstuck. Knowing where you want to be. And the tech industry are experts at this. Tech leaders create these big visions about where the industry is going, about new categories that are being created. Sometimes they're so outrageous, you just think that could never happen. But they hold on to these big visions, they create them and they bring a whole, along the whole industry, they hire lots of people and build big companies around these big visions. 25 years ago, Mark Bettinghoff, who's the founder of Salesforce, had a big vision. He said, I believe someday all technology and software will be delivered via the cloud. 25 years later, that is the truth. But in the beginning, he talked about how people would question him and doubt him and laugh at him, that he had a vision that he had to defend and, and really advocate for continuously. So if you have a hard time understanding where you want to be, if you are struggling with this, four tools you can use on the journey to find out where you want to be. First is understand your values. And when I first moved to California, I was working for a very big tech company. And as I looked around at all the different jobs in Silicon Valley, I decided I wanted to be a chief marketing officer. All the good ones I saw had gone to do their MBA. So I decided I got to do my MBA too. My very first class was called Strategic Thinking for Business Redesign. And I thought, awesome, I'm going to learn some stuff here. The very first assignment, take out a list of values and circle the ones that are most important to you. I was in my 30s. I had never seen a list of values before. I, I knew how I wanted to be in the world, but I'd never taken the time to sit with a list of values and circle the ones most important to me. Now through that process, a big problem was created. I went to my professor and I said, I'm now very clear on what my values are. The thing is, I'm working in a job that doesn't align to my values at all. And that professor said, then you've got two choices. You either need to go and get yourself into a position that aligns with your values and a company that aligns with your values, or you need to find ways to adapt to the environment you're in and still be true to your values at the end of the day. Which made total sense to me because I walked home at the end of every day feeling like shit from that job. And it was because my values weren't in alignment. So if you can find those, that's the first step. Find the envy or the jealousy. My mother always used to say to me, oh, jealousy is so ugly. You shouldn't be jealous of anybody. Well, I actually seek out jealousy now. And what this means is you want to look for places in your life where you're feeling a little bit envious of someone or a little bit jealous of someone because that's speaking to you about something that you actually want about where you want to be. That's going to be a part of the book. At the time, it was very new, very hot, with hundreds of speakers. I watched the stage fill and refill with keynotes and panels and fireside chat conversations. I felt envious of every single person on stage. They were in front of their tech peers and the most important media in the industry. They were in positions of influence and building brands for themselves and for their companies. That envy burned hot through the rest of the conference and on the 11 hour plane ride home. And because I could never sleep on a plane, I spent that time looking at the jealousy and seeing that the gap for me was confidence and thinking big. I hadn't been thinking big enough for my business or my career, and I certainly didn't have the confidence to be on stage and in the Netflix website. But once I saw the gap, I knew what I wanted and how it fit in with the vision I had for my work and team, and it helped me set a new direction of where I wanted to go. Having the confidence to put myself on big stages and increase my influence in the industry was now part of where I wanted to be. That feeling of envy pushed me to get, pushed me to get clear on what I wanted and then move forward to seeing it through. So that's how you can use envy. Look for it in your life. It can be 
very telling about who, where you want to be. Notice your trends. This is about being an observer in your own life. Notice who you're listening to, what events you're going to, what gets you in the pit of your stomach when you hear about it. Again, this sounds so exciting and you think, I want to do that. That is speaking to where you want to be, but you're going to have to notice it. And you're going to have to take notes on it. And you're going to have to actively think about how you make that real. And last exercise here is future you. Well, this is where I want you to look out three years. And I want, to write, I want you to write down for yourself, who are you in three years? What's your age? Where do you live? What kind of work are you doing? What have you accomplished that you're proud of over the past three years? How are you spending your time? Now, if you work on some combination of these four tools, and there's, they go in much deeper in the book, you're going to start to be able to draft for yourself where you want to be. And this is the most important thing you should know. It is not written in stone. There are so many people who say to me, oh, well, Heather, I don't want to write down where I want to be because what if I change my mind? <coughs> you can. That's the great thing. You can get it down as a draft and you can adapt it and you can change your mind anytime you want. But as ideas come up, as new options come up for you, understanding where you want to be can help you decide faster about how to keep moving forward. And that's what this is all about, giving you tools to help you make decisions to keep moving forward. So that is understanding where you want to be. New thinking. So all of us have different thinking models we use day to day. And in the tech industry, they're, they get very excited about new thinking models. There's systemic thinking and there's design thinking, which was very hot for the past decade. And there's two areas of thinking that I encourage when it comes to new thinking. Uh, one is around thinking methods that are associational, critical thinking methods, concrete, fantasy thinking, which is a new way of thinking. And they, each of these thinking models are methods you can use to come up with new and different ideas that you've used before. And that's the whole thing about new thinking when you want to get unstuck. You've got to use different ideas, different methods, and different ways of creating new and different ideas, which is exactly what the tech industry does to be able to see around corners, to be able to create what's new and what's coming and the next new innovation. Also really interesting are horizon frameworks when you think about new thinking. Has anyone ever used a time span horizon framework? That's where it's, it's usually one, two, and three years out. Can use that? Yeah, a couple people. That one is, is quite common, but there's also an innovation spectrum horizon that you can use. And that's where you're thinking about creating different innovations in your business at different time frames. So I'm just going to give you the highlights of your thinking. I'm not going to dig deeper than that. I'm going to keep us moving into short-term tentative goals. When I was doing research for the book, I saw this stat that said that only 9% of New Year's goals get achieved, which to me seems really low. I was really I was surprised about it because it is the biggest goal-setting time all year. But I think it's because we think about goal-setting all wrong. Uh, we think about goal setting as immovable goals. Big, hairy, audacious goal, we had goals, which I believe in. But when we set those big goals, they're often very rigid. We have to achieve it no matter what. And it doesn't matter what happens in the business or what happens with the team. There's a, uh, there's a lot of reliance on meeting that goal no matter what. The way I want you to think about goals moving forward is that you can set them in shorter time frames and still be ambitious. You can also set goals that are tentative, goals you think are the right goals for now, but might change because you're getting new information all the time. So Mark Andreessen, who's a famous VC and, and tech founder in Silicon Valley, talks about strong opinions weekly held. And what's interesting about that statement is he says strong opinions are critical to be successful in the tech industry. You have to believe in what you're doing and have conviction. That is your big vision, your strong opinions. Now, he says weekly held because you're going to get new information all the time. It's just a fact of life. And so if you were so rigid in your thinking that you never took in new information, you could get off track very easily. So with short-term tentative goals, you can think about it shorter, more concise goals, but think about them tentatively. And then review them regularly. So let's just say you, you set some tentative goals for your team and you review them at the end of the quarter. At the end of the quarter, you might say, we've got to retire this goal. It doesn't make sense anymore because of something new that's happened in the business. You might recommit to the goal 
and say, it's actually the right goal for us. Or you might reconfigure the goal and change it up and make something new possible for the team. The way I've been able to use this in my own work is shifting my mindset from a concrete, fixed mindset around goals, like we are hitting this goal no matter what and nobody's going home until we get it done. They used to actually bleed like that, which is terrible. Uh, wasn't great for morale or getting people to think creatively or innovatively. To now it's more flexible, where we have goals to meet, but we gotta make sure that they're the right ones and we have to test against that right now. Think and act big. Uh, how would we call this behaving famously, which is, is another way to think about it. Now, I talk to hundreds of startup companies every year, big tech companies, lots of business leaders, and in tech, this is a well-known secret. And you need to be thinking big and acting big well ahead of any traditional milestone of success, which is quite the opposite for most people I talk to in business who say, you know, once I've achieved big milestones in my business, then I will get out with my thought leadership perspective or my point of view. But I'm asking you to flip that around and think about how thinking big and acting big now can help you be more successful and keep you moving forward in your business. And Whitney Wolfer, she's the founder of Bumble, is a great example of this. So when she founded Bumble, it was a platform for women to be able to take control of the the dating situation, be the first to reach out on a dating app. But she actually had a vision that was much bigger than the dating app. She had a vision around people being able to connect securely, confidently, and uniquely online with all kinds of different relationships. So she had that big vision. She started taking it out immediately into business media, on stages, even before Bumble was traditionally a very successful commercial operation. And she feels really establishing what she wants to be known for. And so my first question to you is when you think big, I know you do think big, you're in this room, you're at this conference, you have big thoughts. Are you clear on what you want to be known for? Just give it a thought. What do you want to be known for? Now if you're not quite sure yet, you could go back to the work that you're going to be doing in understanding where you want to be. Because if you know where you want to be, then you can actually make a connection to what you want to be known for. And call that thought leadership, or as author Dory Clark talks about it, being a recognized expert in your industry. And it's, once you know that, what you want to be known for, then you've got to act big right alongside of it. You have to take that thought and take it out of the world. And people I talk to mostly say, okay, I've got a great thought leadership platform. Uh, I definitely know what I want to say. I'm like, okay, where are you going to say it? And they look, well, I'm not ready to talk about it anywhere yet. Or I'm not sure what people are going to say about it or how they'll respond to it. So I'll just keep quiet for a little while longer. And it creates this grand canyon-sized gulf between thinking big and acting big. And to keep you moving forward, you're going to have to close that gap up. Think and get out there and act big. So again, I'm going to just read a small part of the book around acting big. Okay, this concept of acting big is a simple one. Broken down, it looks like this. Creating your vision for the work you're doing, developing your message, and start communicating it. And we'll get into some specifics, but before we get into the specifics of how you can act big, I want to emphasize that acting big does not make you an egomaniac. It supports your future goals and inspires others to aim for their biggest goals as well. This will become easier once you choose activities that feel natural to you and start doing them regularly. But for many years, I wouldn't engage in any work that put my perspective, vision, or leadership opinions out into the world. I believed that my hard work at work would be recognized and rewarded, and I'd create success by keeping my head down and delivering. But by seeing how leaders in tech created momentum and success by acting big with their content, on stage, in the media, at industry dinners, and as judges for awards, eventually brought me around to the understanding that I needed to put aside any doubt and start acting now. I was often looking for someone like me on stages and in the media, and as more women became more visible, I wanted to be too so that others would join me. So some ways you can act big. There's 10 main ways, and they are from introvert to extrovert. And I got something for everybody, because a lot of introverts will say to me, well, this really isn't for me, Heather, because I'm shy. It doesn't matter. We've got some ideas for you. Okay, so one is a volunteer at an event. Now this might seem ridiculous, but I know many of you 
sitting in the audience want to go to specific events in your industry and you may feel intimidated or you don't know anybody, well, if you volunteer, you have an immediate role at the event, and by the way, those organizations need you. Tons of volunteers here at South by Southwest. So think about that if you're not comfortable attending volunteer. Most of you would be developing content and posting it on LinkedIn or some other channel. Reach out to an influencer in your network and ask them to also post your content as a way to act big in your community. What's the worst they can say? No. Okay, that's not a big deal at all. You just move on to the next person. Judge an award. You can ask to judge awards. I don't know if everybody knows this, but if there's an important award in your industry, contact the organizers and ask if you can judge it. And then enter yourself into an award as well. Someone the other day said, oh, you can't do that. And I said, yeah, you absolutely can. You can enter yourself into an award, and you should. And then create events, even if they're very small events, like hosting a dinner series, or one dinner, or a group of people who are all working around the same topic you are. Just start practicing these acting big activities. It's gonna get you in the habit, and before you know it, your momentum is gonna be so great because you're connecting and you're participating and you're involved in what's happening in your community or in your industry. So last one is plus one thinking and doing. This is a really simple idea. This is taking whatever you're working on and doing it a little bit better. That's it, just a little bit better. Now when I was a marketing assistant years ago, I was doing some onboarding of clients and I would just check the boxes of getting the client onboarded. So at my six month review period, my boss basically told me, you need to behave differently or you're gonna be fired. You're checking the boxes here and it's not what we're looking for in someone in this role. So I went away and I really thought about how do I do this job a little bit better? That's all I could manage to think of at the time. And so I did a letter from the CEO that went out with new client onboarding. And I did a basket of products from other premium clients at our agency. And those small acts led to 20% increase in referrals at the tech company I was with. So you take what you're working on and make it just a little bit better. So some people call this the 1% principle. If you improve 1% every single day, before you know it, you're at the level of exceptional. So little activities like that keep you moving forward. So before I move on, I just want to reiterate again, it does you no good to know what you're going to talk about unless you take action. And if you're feeling insecure or that nobody would care what you have to say in the world, I need you to come talk to me or send me a message and I'll help you move past that because it's critical that you act big in the world, not just think about what you'd like to talk about. All right, unusual moves. Tech does this really, really, really well. And most of us are following these known business playbooks. I've sat in so many rooms as we've created new technology products and new solutions where we'll talk about a number of different ideas, and then some will, some will say, what if we did the exact opposite? And you just think, whoa, 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 what would happen if we did the exact opposite? It's such an interesting idea that you can do something completely different and unusual in tech. But tech does this all the time. So some of the unusual moves they do, a lot of competition. So this is where you partner with your deadliest competitors in the industry to move everybody forward. Who would believe they would tech does this, but they do. So if there's something that you're working on, a competitor is also working on, partnering up, you might be able to make some progress together. Think about it as a possibility. Coalitions are set up all the time in the technology industry to help advance new technologies. Beta testing. If you're in the industry, everybody uses beta testing. But involving clients really early on in the work you're doing can give you some little bit of momentum to help you move forward. So you're not sitting there wondering, what would a client say? Am I going to be able to sell this? Include clients very early on with tools like beta testing. Soft launches of a new product or service, which are a beautiful way to release the pressure valve around high stakes moments for new products and services. Soft launches, as they take that pressure away, they give you more insight about your target audience to keep you moving forward. And tech is excellent at adapting business models. They beg, borrow, and steal from every industry around the world, and they make it their own. So don't be scared to look outside of your industry, outside of your network, for all kinds of new and interesting ideas that you can adapt into your work to help you keep moving forward. 